Peggy. Hi, Al. Good to see you. I'm glad you could make it. I'm glad to be here. My name is Peggy. I do everything. I do sorting and team pinning. I do little barrel racing. I still do all the hunter jumper stuff. Uh, I bred my own horses for years. And, you know, I do a lot of riding lessons now, teaching people how to ride, helping them with their problems, and training their horses. Peggy called me and came over, and we, we talked, and she was telling me that she wanted me to see if I could collect her horse. He's got a real pretty horse, and he's worth every amount of time that we're going to spend on him. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take her, put her in the arena, let her ride in the way she normally rides, the way the horse is, is normally ridden, and then I'll take it from there, and then I'll take her and give her a lesson on uh, my reins and how, how to use them. Now, Peggy's an experienced rider, so I don't need to teach her the routine. There's two things that are different. There's, a, there's collecting your horse and use your own method of riding, and then there is my, my method. Okay, you notice how the horse is trotting and how much she's jumping in the saddle. In fact, she's doing some posting because the horse's stride is sticking out. Look at his head where it's at. It's, his nose is in the air and all of his weight is on his front end. Now she's gonna get him into a lope and he jumps up in the air with his rear end because his front has all the weight in the front. So our whole idea about the double reins is we wanna put it so that his head will be down and he can't do that jumping because his weight will be on his rear. Now she's gonna get him into a lope from the opposite side. And as she pushes him into a lope, you notice that he's on the wrong lead and he's got his weight in the front and he took another jump. And even though she tries to go ahead and change the lead, she can't. But after we finish with a double range, she will be able to do that. Let me explain to you how these double reins work and how they're made. This is a rein that is pulled seven pounds per inch. Now this is a special made bungee cord that I had made out of state. And I buy it, of course, 10,000 feet at a time. This cannot be found in the local hardware store. Now, I'm not saying that you can't find a bungee cord that may work for your horse, but this one will guarantee to work for a pony that's 13 hands high or a draft horse that's 18 and above. It's, it'll work the same. So how this works is we put this on the horse and you probably won't even see nine out of 10 horses, you won't even see them pull the rein but he did pull it a little bit, and he found out that he can pull as far as he wants. Now, some of the older horses that have been pulling for years and years, they may pull it out and hold it out for a little while, but then they'll find out that the rein is not gonna let go, so they'll just give to it. When they give to it and they put their chin down, that is when they're starting to, to shift their weight. As long as they got their head, head down, the weight will shift to the back and so when they move forward they'll be moving with the back legs. Now my method of training is that I let the horse train himself. I just tell him what I want done and he does it himself which you'll see on some of the students. So what we do is we make two of these reins. What we do is run them through here and clamp them here. One end has an adjustment and the other end does not. So this way it would fit whatever horse that you may have. And here's the adjustments. Now we don't make any holes here simply because this Conway buckle will hold itself. If you just want to make it bigger, you just pull it like this and it will stay there. It starts with the Conway buckle and one hole. Now you can adjust this as far as you want. And then if you decide to, you can punch a hole wherever you want. We don't pre-punch them because we never know what size you're gonna need. If we put a hole here and one here, the, what you may need is the one in the middle. So that's how we let you do it. And so the bungee cord, like I said again, is seven pounds per inch. Well, I weigh 200 pounds. Most people weigh less than that. And I can pull it easy. Now, a 1,200 pound horse, is, this is nothing to him. So this is not made to torture him in any way. 
It just means that when he pulls on it, it'll pull him back. That's why he must stay in the arena by himself, so it's between him and the reins. Now, let me show you that this rain splitter is here. I call it a rain splitter. Some people call it martingale. Okay, what this does is splits the reins, makes the, the reins come through here and up to you in the saddle. But we start them off with the round reins because this will slip through there. And, and this is what you can guide him with up and down. Now this has a little more drag than the uh, roller does. After he graduates from this rain, which should be no more than 30 days, we will go to the roller. And the way you do this is all you have to do is take off a screw take off the ring then what you're going to do is you're going to take the roller like this it opens up you put your rein through it with the rough side down and then we will just replace it right here and put the screw back in its place and screw it down. Now, let me show you another little trick on any kind of Chicago screws that you may have. If you take a little bit of fingernail polish and put a little bit in the female threads, when you put this on and tighten it, it won't come off by itself. Yet, when you want it to come off, you can still take it off. And that's just a little trick that I use. Okay, Peggy, this is the box of my double reins. On the top, you'll see an instruction uh, sheet to go by. Uh, actually, you can go to the website and it shows you how to put them on. But of course, I'm gonna show you myself personally. It comes with a cabasson, which you already got one of. Here's your two leather reins, okay? You'll hold that for me. These are your two bungee cord reins, which we'll take them out. And this is your all important, well, I call it rain splitter, but a martingale is another word for it. This is, we're using the rings right now, and it also comes with two rollers. What you're going to do is take this little screw off, take it off, take your reins, open this up, put your reins in here with the rough part of the reins to, to the roller, clip this in here, and you'll put this in its place. That's after you finish. Uh, with his with his bungee cord reins. Don't throw them away because you can use this on other horses. Okay, Peggy, we're going to go ahead and put this breast collar on. I know you've put one or two of these on in your lifetime. And uh, <laughs> and so uh, we'll snap that on him like that. Then we snap the bottom part to his girth right there. Okay, now we've got him steady. We're going to take the, r the rings and we're going to snap it right on here. Now here is his slant of his shoulder. We want four inches right there. That's perfect right there. 55 years of actually training horses, I've run into a, a way to collect your horse where it used to take me a year, two years, three years, depending on the horse, uh, to collect him. And now I can do it in one lesson or one time. Okay, Peggy, let's you and I step out of the ring and let him think about those rings for a little while. Now see, he sticks his head down, how far can I go? With you and me out of the ring, you'll notice that it's now between the reins and him. And as long as it's between the reins and him, he'll adapt. But if we're in there, he's thinking we're the ones that are doing this. So I decided to give Al a call because I've got this young colt, he's four and a half. One of the hardest things to, to teach a horse is how to be collected. And once they know how to be collected, it's a lot easier for them to learn the rest of their job because you then have control over the entire horse. It, it takes a long time to teach a horse how to be collected. I had heard that Al had this new method and I, I wanted to use it on my own horse before I used it on a client's horse. I always want to learn more and anything that's better for the horse, the sooner he is able to learn how to do his job, 
the, the sooner he can go and show. And so here I am, I'm here to, to learn from Al. Okay, we're gonna drape these two rubber reins over his neck and run them through the ring and go ahead and clip it on that side. I'll clip this one on this side. Just like that. We're gonna adjust it a little bit here and let's see how that is. That's pretty close. So to start with, that's all we need. So now what we're gonna do with him is we're gonna let you come on in, Peggy, and just kind of work him a little bit. Let him walk and trot. Okay. Let him get used to it. What I'm looking for today is with this colt, he's, he's just green broke. He's just done a little bit of trail riding and I want to show him this fall. And so I've got three months to get him ready for the fall. Notice where his head is at. Beautiful shape. Isn't that pretty? And he doesn't seem to mind it at all. Now you notice the saddle is moving a lot less than it was before. Because he's putting more of his weight on his back end. He still doesn't have his weight back there where we want it, but we will in a minute. Now go ahead and get a, get a canter out of him. Now you see folks that he was running in the wrong lead. Now he's running in the right lead. That's the, that's the beauty of a 42 foot pin, is that it's hard for him to run in the wrong lead. The lead is where his front feet is at. Right now he's in a trot, so they're both out extended. As she gets him into a, a canter, now he's in the wrong lead. Now see how he stopped by himself? Now speed him up again, Peggy. And you'll see that, See how he jumped off in the proper lead, which is a right lead for a right turn. There you go. See, he picked it up himself. That's why the 42 foot pin is so important. Okay, now we're uh, gonna put the top rein on. The top rein has to be the same length as the bottom rein. So you've got about four inches difference between the bottom rein and the top rein, but don't go by four inches. Yeah. Just go by the way it feels. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll just tighten it up just a hair more and uh, try it again. Yeah, that, there he is right there. He's got both of them together. Okay. Now I'll let you go ahead and mount him. Uh, while you're here, Mr. Cameraman, notice that she's got her, her cabasson below this bone right here. Fingers. Because that is, that is a very sensitive area. It needs to be below that bone right there. Al has come up with a very wonderful double rein technique and this is going to help me, my clients, and all the horses that I have to work with. Most of my people's problems is they don't have thousands of dollars to spend to have a horse in training for a year. And so I have to compress some things and this just helps the horse learn what to do so much faster without having to spend hours and hours and hours in the saddle. So now, let's go ahead and get him in a lope and keep him that way. I noticed that the horse tried to crow hop with her. Some people call it bucking, but it's really not. It's crow hopping. And uh, it was because he was comfortable in the gate that he was in, and you forced him into another gate. And uh, he rebelled a little bit there. But then once after he was collected, he found it very difficult to rebel. Very good. Keep him going. Excellent, excellent. Okay, go ahead and stop him. Okay, stop. And he'll stop. Now, see the difference, Peggy? is that he now you are his master he says i want to follow you and that's the reason why we did it in the beginning he wouldn't follow you now he is following you because we collected him and we made him do what he made him do a, a, a gallop and so when he was galloping like that and you were forcing him into the gallop 
you're not knowing it, but you automatically made him uh, your subordinate. He, from now on, he's going. you're his master. He's going to follow you. So go ahead and walk away from him again if you want. Don't look at him. Keep your head away from him. Turn into the fence. Peggy's had a chance to ride her horse a couple of times, and uh, she went back to her English saddle. She used her Western saddle because she doesn't have saddles that have horns, and we must have a saddle with a horn in order to get the horse used to the double reins at Bungee Court Range. Now you see the horse, how well collected he is. Look at, look at the difference. The horse has got his head almost in a vertical, and she's not bouncing in the saddle as she did before, and you notice another thing, is that the horse is not bucking anymore. He's not, well, he wasn't bucking to begin with, but he was doing a little crow hopping and a little, now you gotta remember this horse is green broke. She hasn't ridden him all that much. Beautiful, very good, excellent. From, from the time we put the, the double reins on him, he, he quickly figured out what he needed to do and complied, and it, it definitely took less than an hour for him to understand what we wanted from him, and I don't see anything except success ahead for him because he's gotten over a really large hurdle that takes a long time to teach a horse to, to give in and do what, you, what you're asking him to do. This, he taught himself, basically, and that's, that's always very important when they can learn a lesson on their own rather than having it forced on them by a human. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for coming to the ranch. I'm delighted with my horse's progress. Very good. You take care now. All right, bye-bye. Bye. When Peggy first came here today, um, she's a professional trainer, and that's what she does for a living. And... Um, I was so happy to see that she was so open-minded that she wanted to see an easier way to train her horse. And now I think she can go home and take off from here and train all the other folks' horses and her own as well in a lot less time and a lot safer manner. And so I'm really happy to work with Peggy. She was a real true professional. On the left, you notice the horse before the lesson has his nose out in the air and all of his weight on the front end. He's just jumped up in the rear because he has all his weight on the front end, whereas the picture on the right is just a smooth, even gallop, and she's hardly moving in the saddle at all. She accomplished this in one lesson. Imagine what she can do 30 days from today.